Hello, LA Diecast, and uh, in this video, uh, I'm going to start covering how I do my customs. And um, uh, most of you that subscribe have been used to me covering whatever the newest Hot Wheels that are out uh, come out. And I decided this year that uh, I wasn't going to collect the newest Hot Wheels as much. I'm not going to collect all the main lines like I usually do. And I'm not going to cover the, the newest releases as much. I still will. But uh, I'm not going to get as many of those. I just sold off most of my extra stock of the old main lines and uh, wrapped up my old collections. And so this year I start, wanted to um, focus on customizing. And it's something I've been doing. I just haven't been covering it really in the videos as much. But... Uh, I thought I would do that this year. So um, in this one I thought we'd start at the beginning and I'm just going to basically take out the rivets in two cars, do a quick wheel swap on them and um, uh, we will get going and hopefully I'll, I'll be able to kind of follow through with the customs on all sorts of things that I do with them. So we're going to start with just two cars and uh, I picked these two cars because the wheel bases on these two cars are, if not the same, they're very similar. I'm assuming they're the same. I glanced at them real quick and we're just going to swap the wheels on them. We've got a 70 Plymouth Cuda and a 69 Ford Torino Talladega. So I'm going to open these guys up real quick and... By the way, for those that follow me on the Facebook page, you know I do a lot of these, these, stay there, these um, Kudas. One of my favorite castings. The Talladega is right up there too, but the, uh, the Kudas are very, very easy to do. They're, they're kind of a good beginner car for um, customizers. So we're going to need a few things for this. First thing we're going to need is our safety glasses, so I'm going to put those on. The next thing we're going to need is, um, uh, where is it here? We're going to need a drill, and this isn't going to get in here completely. My drill is just an old Craftsman drill, nothing fancy. This thing's about 10 years old. It is a, um, it's a 3 8 inch drill, but that won't matter. Most any drill you have. The main thing that you want to make sure is that it is variable speed, meaning as I, I can, I can kind of nudge this or I can make it go faster. So the, the more I pull back on the trigger, the faster it goes. Most drills are like that, so you're probably good on your drill. Next thing, I'm going to need two drill bits, and I have, oh, the one in the drill. The, the bigger drill bit here is a, get it in the picture, that's 916, or not 916, 964 drill bit. And I have a cobalt blade. It's a split tip, meaning the tip there, if I can get it in there, the tip has two cutting edges. Get it in focus. And that makes it a little bit easier to use. The, um, so that's a 964th. And then the smaller one that we're going to use to drill the, um, the screw holes is this guy. And I've still got the package if you want to use it to order. But that's a 116th. And I use these titanium uh, blades, and um, these are, I go through these quite a bit. I go through about one a week, one every two weeks, and they just get chipped and beat up no matter what brand I get. You're going to need more of those. The smaller ones are just going to fall apart. The, the 964th has held up fine for a long time, but I go through those little bug guys quite a bit. Um, and... I think that's all we need to get going. We'll cover the screws and all when we get there. So, what I'm going to do, I use one of these little plastic bins to uh, drill in, and I'm going to have to kind of get over my camera here to get in here. And I use the, the bigger drill bit first. So this is the 964. Some people will drill the smaller hole first and then come in with the larger one. I don't know that it really matters, but uh, I find that I waste too much of my small drill bits drilling through too much metal that I don't need in the long run. So what we're going to do here, if I can get it in the picture, is we need to drill straight down. And usually I can get this to work. And every rivet's going to be a little bit different. And you can see there that I've kind of drilled out some of the rivet. A little bit more 
and I tend to wiggle the drill around just a little bit. What you're trying to do is just break through that top piece of metal, that lip, that's the rivet part. And you don't want to drill down too low. Just enough so that there's nothing really holding that, that peg in there. And uh, be careful with the metal. This is metal. And you can get, if I can get a little piece here, so just be careful because something like that piece of metal, if I get it in focus, that is going to hurt if it ends up in your, your finger. And um, so be safe with it. You can see the car is kind of kicking around there a little bit. That's normal. A drill press will work for this as well. And I think on this one, yeah, this one, if you, everything works and your your uh, your rivet is in decent shape, you'll get that little ring, and that's the lip, and that's the only thing that is holding the car on. So if we did this right, let's see, and sometimes, yeah, there you go, should just lift right off because now there's nothing holding the base on. And you've got a couple pieces to your car. Most cars are kind of have the same thing. They've got a casting, this big metal piece. Not always metal. On the uh, track cars, it's usually plastic and the base is metal. But for customizing, we're used to using these, uh, these metal tops. You're going to have a little windshield. You're going to have a base with the wheels still stuck in it. We'll get back to that guy in a second. And then you're going to have an interior. And I usually stick these in a little plastic bag so I don't get them mixed up. But we can uh, probably keep track of two cars just fine. So let's do the Talladega next. And I'm watching that little ring around the top of that lip. You can see there's a little burr there. You can see that. That's why you need to be careful when you're trying to clear out that material. Don't uh, don't hurt yourself. That looks about right. And we'll get this guy. I'm used to working a lot closer, so I can't see as much with the camera in front of me. And some of these rivets, by the way, will be a little harder to get out than others. Kind of glancing at it. I'm used to being a lot closer to them, so I can't quite see them. There we go. And if you get that little, that little ring out of there, then you're doing fine. Okay. This guy should come apart. They don't always come apart. And this guy, there you go. He's going to pop apart if they, um, if you get some resistance, like I am with this guy, this front peg isn't, isn't, uh, given up too well, just kind of pop them loose. Don't bend the base. The bases will crack. They're just plastic on a lot of these cars. So there we go. So we've got, I'm going to put these over here in two little piles, windshield, interior, top part. Okay. And all that is all that's come out of our cars so far. I'm going to throw that away so it doesn't scratch the top of them when we get back to it. Okay, now what we're going to do is clip those wheels out. And what I use are these little hobby clippers. And these are for clipping models um, away from the plastic uh, leftover pieces, like plastic car models. And Everybody kind of has a different way of doing it. You can just pop these out. But what I find is I end up bending the axles a little bit. And I think a lot of times people will pop them out because they're not just they're not going to use the, the axles again. I want to use the axles. So let's see if I can get the light. There's three little pegs there or, or clips. And we're aiming at the there's two on one side and one on the other. And I'm going to clip the one that's on the side by himself and see those wheels will pop right out. Oops. So flip this guy around. Nope. Clip this. And there we go. And they pop right out. 
and I believe these wheels are the same size. Yeah, there's your wheels. Same size. Front and back are the same size. I'm going to leave the base there. Put the base with the wheels so I don't forget which is which. And this guy, this is the Talladega base. Just going to clip that out. There we go. And just clip that piece out. And if they don't come out immediately, just kind of finagle them out. Now this guy, I believe, yeah, this guy has a front and a back wheel that are different sizes. So let me zoom in there. There you go. So um, we need to accommodate that. And I think both these cars will accommodate it just fine. So, okay. Now I'm going to switch bases here so I can keep track of what's going on. This is the uh, CUDA base and which side is which here? The curved side is the front. I seem to always mess up the front and the backs. So what we're going to do is Okay, we're back. Sorry about that. What happened there, real quick if I get it, is my um, my CUDA base had some little kind of brake pads molded into it and they were acting as spacers and it was making the wheels too tight. So I just dremeled them out with my handy dandy dremel. I just basically sheared off kind of a layer of plastic there. And now if I get in here, and which was the back? The round part's the front. These guys will just snap right into place. And now those are the original Talladega wheels on my CUDA. And if I jump over here to my my Talladega. These maybe these are gonna fit a little funky, but that's okay. There we go. And these are gonna fit a little weird, but you get the idea. There we go. So those are in. Now what we have to do is deal with the uh, putting these all back together. So I am going to switch out my 960 or 964th drill bit, and I'm going to replace it with the 1 16th. There we go. Yeah, let's put that in a little bit closer so it's easier to use. And make sure these are centered. That's a good way to break off your drill bit. But now I have that small drill bit in there. And it's hard to see, but because when I drilled out that original rivet, it left a tiny little um, kind of divot in the post. And I'm going to use that to center with. Before I do that, I'm going to quickly quickly I'm gonna quickly shave that down a little bit here and put that guy back and I'm going to grab this one and I'm using my Dremel again use the Dremel a lot a whole lot and you can see now I've put a, a little sander on there and what I'm gonna do is just sand this down enough that it's not going to cut. And that's going to give me a little bit tighter fit. Since I've got this out here, I'll quickly do that. Talladega. There you go. Those little burrs in there that are left over from when I drilled it out sometimes space the casting too much and now I'm going to just drill out and if you go slow And you can see we've drilled that out. I'm going to turn off the video here and drill out the other three. 
Okay, and now we've we've drilled out those what are going to be the screw holes with our 1 16th drill bit. Hard to see there. I'm going to see if I can zoom in a little bit. Focus. There you go. You can kind of see that hole. Make it deep enough to hold the screw. It really doesn't need to be very deep. So an eighth of an inch, which is about where my fingernail is there, is uh, plenty, plenty deep enough. So... All right, now we've got our parts and pieces. We don't have anything that will hold the screw in place. Right now they're just holes. So I need to use a 1 16th inch tap. And all I'm going to do is just push in and barely screw down a little ways. Don't need to go too far. Oops, something just fell. Don't need to go too far in there. Or you'll just kind of strip the, the, the marks you're making. You're scribing in there. There we go. And one more. And there we go. And there's some resistance. You'll, you'll be able to tell if it's working. But this tap has to be the same uh, size as your smaller drill bit. Okay. There we go. We're almost done. So now we put these guys back together and then we'll talk about the screws that we're gonna use. And I got my pieces all mixed up here. So let's see, this one is, that's the window for my CUDA. This I believe is the interior. Here is the, um, the wheels. Oh, one thing I should mention, the wheels right now will come out. You can glue them with a little bit of JB weld, which is what I usually do. And I put the JB weld right there. Don't get near the ends where the wheels are. The axle doesn't need to move. It's just the wheels need to rotate around it. So a little bit of JB weld right there and there or some super glue. If you're going to use something like um, super glue, just be aware that it tends to travel up the axles and get jammed up in the wheels. So it's not a good way to make sure your wheels will run. JB Well works much better. Most cars have a little kind of holder there, if you can see it. And that's what I'm going to use. I'm just going to kind of clamp these down. And they're going to hold good enough. The nice thing about these um, CUDAs, as you can see, that's a much bigger wheel than what was there before. But there's a lot of clearance in there. So it's going to work just fine. And that guy's all together. We'll put him aside and let's go over to the Talladega. Get our windshield in there. There you go. Get him in there. And there's our inside. And what's the front and the back here? I think that's our... Nope, got it backwards. Here's our front. You can see there, there's a little bit of spacing between the wheels. The casting is going to hold those wheels in place. So I don't need to resize the axles. And I'll cover the resizing the axles in another video. Put this guy all together. Is that his front? I think that's his front. Do I have that right? Nope. <laughs> Trying to put the front on the back and the back on the front. That's not going to work. Okay. I'm still trying to do it backwards. There we go. And if I get this in here. No, we got all sorts of issues here. What I did was put that on backwards. So the poor guys were facing backwards in the car. Not going to be a very cool Talladega if you're facing backwards. Okay, there we go. So now. I got my CUDA wheels on my Talladega. I'm not sure I like those wheels probably as much on them, but it certainly rides low. And then I've got these cool wheels on my CUDA. I like those. I like those big, big back wheels on there. So let's take a look and see what we got before we screw them all together. This is my CUDA. Let's zoom in on him there. So that's one of them. And here's the Talladega, which is kind of riding real low, looking nice. 
All right, now what we're gonna use is the screws, and I use two size screws. It just, it screws. It just depends on uh, what happens with the car as I make it. So a couple things here, and I'll put these up here so you can see them. These are, I get these off Amazon. I haven't found a store that carries them. Even my computer store seems to always be out of them. But um, you can see the part number there. And this is from Amazon. Um, they sell them there. These are the, what are they? These the small ones? Yeah. These are the small ones. And the uh, small ones, I got a glance over here at my notes, are uh, 1 8 inch 256 screws. So 256 is the type of screw you're looking for. They're really tiny. 256 is the type of screw, the size. And 1 8 is the depth. So these are 1 8. These are the smaller ones. Whoops. My garage floor is littered with these. And the black ones that you see in there and some other sizes are mixed in here. Those are from um, various other models of die cast cars. And I keep the screws because some different cars, some different models take different screw sizes. But Hot Wheels will take the, uh, the 256. These are 256, um, uh, what are these? These are 316. And these are 316. And you can see they're a little deeper. And the 316 I use when I drill out too much of the post. And certain models just need a deeper screw. So for the 316, there is your information. You can pause the video there if you'd like. And for the 1 uh, eight, one eighth inch, there is your information. Amazon.com, I think, yeah, there you go. So there you go. And I also use washers sometimes. I'm not going to need them on this car, but I use these brass uh, 0.089 size washers, 316th bolt size. There you go. And I'm going to use the small ones. So I'm going to get the small ones here. We'll put in one screw and then I'll pause the video and we'll do the rest and we will be done. I'm going to use a very small Phillips head screwdriver, one that fits the, the screw. I find it easiest to put the screw on the screwdriver and then flip the car over and just pop them in. And they should go right in. Don't strip the screw. You don't need to put them in too deep. The base will the base will bend if you um, tighten them too much, and you'll warp the base, which may make the wheels funky. There we go. That guy's in. This guy's good to go. He'll roll off, and we can do this guy. I guess we don't need to pause the video. Everything's working pretty good here. And I didn't follow my own advice that time and put the screw on the screwdriver. There we go. This guy just goes in. Remember, you got to tap those rivet posts or it won't work. And if the screw goes in and it's still loose, that is because the hole you drilled is not deep enough. Whoa. The hole you drilled was not deep enough. And you can either use washers as spacers to tighten it up, or you can re-drill the hole and re-tap it. There you go. And we are done. So that is the easy way to just get those screws out of the, um, the cars, swap your wheels, and we will do some more videos in the future. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.